Hello, my name is Wade Nomura, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. With us today, we have Krista Vestman, who is actually a member of Rotaract. And for those of you that don't know what Rotaract is, we are going to find out about it. Krista, welcome. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, I'm originally from Seattle, Washington, and I moved to Santa Barbara about five years ago uh, for the sunshine. And <laughs> as you can imagine, it's beautiful, and I never wanted to leave after I graduated. And I was very fortunate to find a job here in town, and I look forward to staying. So what do you do? I work at a local um, marketing agency, and we do the media planning and buying for different clients. Okay. Oh, great, great. And how did you get involved with Rotaract? Um, well, it kind of started when I was younger. They uh, contributed to my traveling um, abroad in Costa Rica when I was 16 um, to be a foreign exchange student. And then again, when I was here in Santa Barbara, a good girlfriend of mine, she was the social chair for the Rotaract Club, and she totally suckered me into it and <laughs> said, we have all these fun events that we do and come meet, um, meet the girls and the guys that make up our club. And yeah, it was really great. They welcomed me in. Great. And how long have you been in Rotaract? Uh, going on about two, oh, two and a half years now. Wow. Okay, great. Um, tell us a little bit about your uh, experience. So is that Rotary Youth Exchange? Was that what it was? Uh, it wasn't a youth exchange program. Okay. Uh, when I went there, it was twofold. So I did ask them to help contribute some money to studying. And when I got back, I did a little report on my experience. So it wasn't the youth exchange, which having heard a lot more about it uh, at the district conference, I really wish that I would have known it existed because <laughs> it sounds like a phenomenal project that they're going to do. But it was sponsored. Actually, your, your trip was actually sponsored by Rotary then? Uh, yes, they did contribute. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, the length of time you were in Costa Rica? I was there for six months. And I hear you learned Spanish quite well there, <laughs> being yes, immersed in it. Mm -hmm, I Good. loved it. <laughs> Um, what do you think about that experience? Was that something that you felt um, Rotary helped contribute to in expanding your life there? Oh, most certainly. Uh, I think when you really get to go into these cultures and uh, learn the languages and live with local families, you just get a real feel for the culture and the community there, and you really appreciate what you have back home, and sure. especially Costa Rica being um, the third world country at the time when I went. Uh, yeah, you just really learn to appreciate everything okay. you have. Oh, very good. So tell us a little bit about your club. Well, our club is about 14 or 15 members or so now. Um, we meet at a local brewery here in town, Telegraph Brew Co., and we meet twice a month. And our club is made up of members from, I want to say, around 23 to about 30 years old of age. Mm -hmm. um, but Rotaract in general is usually about 18 to 30 year olds. Right. And yeah, I mean, we've got teachers, we've got accountants, we've got people that work in media, we've got people that, yeah, from all over actually California and some parts of the U.S. too that have come and joined. Very nice, very nice, great. Um, you did a presentation at the district conference I thought mm -hmm. was quite fascinating because it covered a lot of what the different clubs are doing. And that is one of the areas where we have found difficulty. And when I say we, as a Rotary leadership, we've had a hard time trying to keep engaged with the Rotaract group. So if you wouldn't mind uh, sharing that PowerPoint with us, that'd be great. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so let's jump into the first slide. Yeah, so actually, as you'll see, the Rotaract is celebrating our 50th anniversary in March this coming year. So we put together the presentation to try to bridge the gap between Rotarians and um, other interactors so they could see what Rotaractors are up to. And so yeah. Uh, Rotaract originally began as a Rotary International Youth Exchange Program, and it stands for Rotary in Action. And so our goal is with all the Rotaractors is that we want to help our communities through acts of service, and our impact is both local and global. Okay, that's great. So um, 50 years in Rotary, that was with uh, Rotary International, correct? Mm -hmm. That's at the international level. Mm -hmm. Have you met with or visited with any other groups outside of our district or country? You know, I at the district conference, I met some other Rotarians from Mexico and from Korea, but I haven't partaken in any um, exchanges with anybody that's from another Rotaract Club internationally yet, but I hope to. You got it. Well, um, one thing you might want to consider Sponsorship-wise, at the local Rotary Clubs, mm -hmm. there is a Rotaract uh, convention, pre-convention, every year. Okay. The uh, one coming up is going to be in Toronto this year. Oh, so fabulous. You may want to jump onto that one. It would be a great time for you. I would love to. <laughs> okay, thanks. 
So next slide you have, you have a few more slides there? Yeah, so one I kind of just cover is the reach of Rotaract in general. So currently there's about uh, 9,500 Rotaract clubs uh, and there's over 290,000 Rotaractors and we are in over 177 different countries. Wow, well that's great. Um, additionally, uh, I went in depth with some of the global impacts and some of the projects that both Rotaractors and Rotarians have partaken in. Um, and some of those projects include um, when they were in Turkey and Russia, they would work with children with Down syndrome in um, New Guinea or Uganda. Oh shoot, I lost place in my slide. I hope I'm not missing any up anything. I might need my notes out here for this. Um, in Bulgobi, they worked aside local doctors and schools um, to provide uh, HIV testing and prevention uh, and education to over a thousand residents in wow. nearby villages. And again, in the Philippines, who are in need of clean water and sanitation, um, Rotaractors and Rotarians help provide them clean water sources. Nice. And then additionally, um, what ha I didn't create this, but the Rotaract International Clubs they did, they created a wonderful platform uh, to celebrate the 50th anniversary where you can see all the different ways to fundraise, that you can advocate, uh, raise awareness, and provide direct services to local communities. And so I urge you, uh, Rotarians and Rotaractors, to go on to this website and look at all the fun ways and fun projects that are going on. And uh, it's really fun because you can create a little picture or create a little selfie and they've got little frames on there and they've got little themes to celebrate Rotaract. Great, outstanding. This is a true confession of a man that lost his mind. Real regression when it's you that you left behind. But now I'm moving, now I'm moving, now I'm moving It's a weird position, it's a matter you can't contain Self-repression when your soul wants to hop the train But now we're moving, now we're moving, now we're moving on Oh my god, I put the world on stop Somehow I gotta add to something One time before the curtain drops I'm alright, I'm alright Oh my god, I put the world on stop Somehow I gotta add to something One time before the curtain drops I'm alright, I'm alright So this is actually just going to showcase the clubs that make up the district of 5240. Uh, we have about nine Rotaract clubs that uh, are in the area. Some of them are active and some of them are not depending on if they were made for a college town or not. Uh, so we've got San Luis Obispo, Santa Maria, Cal Poly Slow, uh, Santa Barbara here, Ventura, Conejo Valley, the CSU Channel Islands is also one. Bakersfield, and then, correct me if I'm wrong, is Tespachi? Tehachapi. Tehachapi, thank Tehachapi. you. <laughs> Tehachapi is also another club as well. Good, good. Now, have you had a chance to meet with any of them? I got to meet with the Ventura Rotaract Club, okay. some of the members. They've and been then, very active also. Oh, yeah. they're so great, yeah. and they're really fun. Uh, we've been able to kind of partner good. up on some things, and they've got a wonderful build that they do in Mexico, mm -hmm. and when we did one of our fundraisers, we were able to donate to them. So that was really nice, because they then invited us to come on the build. So so Great. it's kind of cool to Great. see. Um, and then through various emails, uh, everybody was able to send some slides that they um, made or wanted to showcase who they are as a club and some of the projects that they're on. Okay. So you'll see those as we keep going. Great, great. Okay, let's hear about them then. Great. So we're well, starting with uh, the Rotaract Club of San Luis Obispo. Some of the great things that they're involved are in are uh, maintaining their community garden. Uh, they have various beach um, cleanups that they're part of. They also volunteer at the Slow Bike Rodeo, and also they do a Coats for Kids drive as well. Okay. Yeah. Now, have you met with any of them? Seen any no, of them I didn't. I saw some of them at the district conference okay. when we had some of the clubs stand. Um, uh -huh. Each club, I think, maybe had one or two representatives at minimum that was there on the last day. Uh, okay. But I wish I could have engaged with them a little bit more. Sounds good. Sounds like uh, the leadership of our district should probably put something together for you. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it, that might yeah, be a Yeah, that'd idea. be great. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
And then we've also got the Rotaract Club of Santa Maria and two main projects that they really have spearheaded are Bilingual, which is kind of as it sounds, it's for Spanish and English speakers to okay. get together. And they facilitate a one hour uh, session or a two hour session twice a month where people can come in and use Spanish and English and they have a bilingual facilitator there. And another thing that they do is go bags. And so they have a group of people get together and you can see what it's like. Um, their sorting mad madness is what they call it. And they all get together and they stuff these bags with school items, personal items, um, fun games and activities for kids. And they're distributed to kids who are getting relocated into foster homes. Uh -huh. So what's really great about that is that those kids aren't often able to take those possessions with them. Right. And so it kind of gives them a sense of personal belonging and they have some things to kind of help them through that process. And that's a great project. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> And then, um, so the Rotaract Club of Santa Barbara, there's a few, um, few things that we're actively involved in here. Uh, one of the things that we're actually partaking in this coming Saturday uh, is the Flower Empower, and we uh, partner with them, and we take leftover flowers from the farmer's markets, and we make little bouquets, and then we donate them and give them to people who are terminally ill. That's one of the things, and then we also do, we recently did the Lemon Festival on Golita, which is a great community event, and we were able to fundraise over $2,200 as a club uh, to donate, and we haven't decided where we want to donate it to yet, but uh, <laughs> it's nice that we were able to raise those funds and donate it somewhere. Very nice. And then uh, we have a few other things that we take part in throughout the year. We do an annual rummage sale. And as I mentioned, we donated those proceeds, excuse me, uh, to the Ventura Rotaract Club. And so it helped went to their trip, which was really great. Oh, that is good. <laughs> and then um, the Rotaract Club of Ventura, which we were just talking about, mm -hmm. they've got 40 members, which is fantastic. Wow. So wow. We're, we need to steal some, some <laughs> plays from their book, I suppose. <laughs> right. um, what's great about them is they're really involved. Uh, you saw it this weekend over at the district conference where they were a part of. And they typically try to meet at least four times a month or have something going on with mm -hmm. their general board meeting, um, their general meeting, a social event, and at least one community event. Uh, they're known for their annual Easter egg hunt and Christmas party at a transitional living home in Ventura. And then we also have the Rotaract Club of Conejo Valley and their signature projects. Um, one of them is called Girl Power and their belief is that uh, underprivileged women should never have to choose between uh, help serving their families and helping their families and also um, having access to feminine hygiene products. So together they have donated more than six months worth of feminine hygiene right. products to a local woman and children's shelter. So that was really great. And then their goals are to be, um, to turn themselves in from a small but mighty club into a large and unstoppable club. And I thought that's a great <laughs> motto to have. That is a great motto. <laughs> Very um, good. <laughs> and yeah, this year they would also love to participate in more projects and continue their Girl Power project good. as well. Good. And then lastly, we've got the Rotaract Club of Bakersfield, and their signature project is supporting uh, Global Family and their efforts to bring awareness to and put an end to human trafficking. Mm -hmm. And uh, they also do a mobile blood drive partnership uh, within their county, and they also do, um, they partner up with Rotary clubs in Kern County and they do something which is called Kern Yes and they organize uh, a one day conference or summit for a local empowerment mm -hmm. for local high school students. Yeah. Great. Yeah and then that kind of summarizes uh, the clubs that made up the district of 5240 and uh, at the end of the presentation we just wanted to say thank you to the Rotarians who have been great examples in our communities and who have sponsored our clubs in and shown us the way uh, to work within our communities, both locally and globally. Great, outstanding, that was a good presentation. <laughs> I enjoyed it then, I enjoyed it this time also. Uh, tell us a little bit about, I would say how you plan on recruiting more people, how are you gonna bring more people into your club? Yeah. Have you thought about that? Yeah, we definitely have. Um, and we've actually heard it quite a bit with uh, among the other Rotary Clubs as well. And I think it just comes down to what, what made you join and kind of realizing that everybody joined for, you know, a lot of times it was friendship or leadership skills or they really valued the projects that you were partaking in. 
And so I think when we have our social events that we are we love to do, uh, we just want to make them as fun as possible so that people around us can see that giving back to the community doesn't have to be a struggle and you shouldn't have to choose between having fun and helping others. You can really incorporate both at the same time. And so we have some fun socials that you'll have to stay tuned for and <laughs> you're more than welcome to come too. We'd love I to have you. To Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for that. Some of the uh, clubs, for example, the success of the Ventura Club has a lot to do with the support they get from the, their local club. Mm -hmm. Ventura has been very active. The Ventura Rotary Club has been very active in supporting them in their efforts. Yeah. Have you seen the same? Um, were you looking at possibly getting more support? And if so, what kind of support would you be looking for? Yeah, I think, uh, I think recently I, I'm new to Rotaract in the sense that I've been serving on the board, I think, for six months now. But I was more of just like the member that would show up at the events, but I never really took charge of what events I wanted to partake in. Uh, so I know some of the other members that started our club, uh, they were really great with Service Project and reaching out to the other Rotary members. And so this year, I'm very fortunate to be co-president with Jenna. Uh, Jenna is what we call a dual member. So she is a part of a Rotary club and also part of Rotaract. So she's really helped bridge our gap between Rotary and Rotaract. And it's been really fun to go to the group eight meetings uh, that are made up the eight Rotary clubs here once a month. And we get to talk about some of the things and uh, the support that we need. And um, it's really great because sometimes we need a little bit more help on the financial end or maybe last minute we need somebody to come in and help do an event with us. And so your Rotary Club, I believe Galita, they used to do the Lemon Festival booth that right. we were able to slip into their spot. So having those kinds of connections and relationships has been really helpful because without them, we might not have secured that spot. Mm -hmm. And additionally, a few of the Rotary members helped us last minute staff a booth when we needed. So I think as long as we're able to just keep the communication open between both groups. I think we need your help just as much as you might need ours. Exactly. Uh, and yeah. so uh, we look forward to seeing some of the projects that we can work on together. Good, good, that sounds great. Future, um, have you taken a look at what Rotary actually has to offer? So when you become 31. <laughs> when I become 31. Uh, yeah, when you get old. Um, <laughs> Have you taken a look at what Rotary would have to offer and would that be something that would suit you? Oh, definitely. Uh, I think over this past weekend when I was at the district conference, I got a really good idea of what Rotary is and the history of Rotary and uh, w where it's going in the future. And I think it's something that interests me a lot. They have a lot of great community events, a lot of leadership. Uh, I mean, the fact that they've been able to come so close to eradicating polio, I think is a phenomenal thing to to be a part of. And um, I look forward to hopefully getting a lot more youth in there as well. Not that there's not <laughs> youth now, but I think um, just a way to bridge the gaps with Rotarians and Rotary or Rotaractors. Uh, the more people that you can get in that kind of share the same value and that energy, um, yeah, I think Rotary offers a lot. <laughs> Good, good. And it sounds like, um, well, you've had a, a lifetime right now of <laughs> serving people, doing, doing things for the right reasons. Rotary offers a lot of that. How would you as a president bring that same ideal to your club members and Rotaract? Well, in, including the international part of it. Okay. Well, one of the things is I think is just being educated and knowing what out, what's out there as far as available service projects and things that you can do and also asking your members what are the things that they believe in. Uh, at the beginning of the year, our board got together and we were like, hey, what are our goals? And membership was on there, participating in more community events. And I think one of the great things they were able to do is as a club, we decided it was really important for a couple of us to attend the Rotary District Conference. And so as a club, we decided some of the funds would help, would go towards us doing these things. And also when everybody in the club got to put together a few of the projects that they were passionate about, we kind of got to vote on them. So it gets everybody engaged, feeling that their opinions matter too and their interests are also important. Good. Now as Rotaract, uh, some people say it's a bridge between Interact to Rotary. Mm -hmm. Have you felt that way? Have you worked with the Interactors, the high schoolers? You, you know, I haven't, but again, I keep referencing this past <laughs> weekend, but there was so many great Interact Youth Exchange students from True. Germany, Brazil, uh, I believe Japan or China was another one, and they just 
they had such great energy to yeah, them and such true. a good spirit. And hearing their stories of being exchange students and getting to work on some of the local projects here was really motivating. And I love working with kids and I love sports. And so I think that we would really love to reach out to the interactors that are nearby us. And I actually don't know if we have a local interact club. And if we don't, then I think it's something that our club could definitely see ourselves uh, participating in and maybe sponsoring them in. Sounds good. There's actually uh, three there or is. Okay. four interact clubs sponsored by different clubs. Oh, fantastic. So your sponsoring clubs would be the one to give you that information. Okay. But uh, again, that's another good opportunity that you have. We had uh, Jenna here, I think, a few years ago on the show. And okay. She shared with us at that time, I think she was secretary. Okay. Now that she's a president or co-president mm -hmm. with you, um, she does come with some experience. So um, how have you split up your year now that you're co-president? <laughs> um, we both kind of decided that we had some strong suits. Um, and Jenna's job allows her to be on the email uh, often. So she's able to communicate and set up uh, events and people to come in and as guest speakers. And I was able to attend more of the meetings in the evenings and also the group eight meetings. So even though so far we've both been able to attend quite a few and get on the email chain, uh, dividing up our responsibilities is kind of like, you can help a little bit more on this project, go for it, and you can kind of spearhead this project. Uh, so we're still, still figuring that out, uh, but it seems to be working so far. Good, good. Now how about the idea, um, if you talk to Jenna about the joint membership, being a member of Rotaract and Rotary at the same time. Have you discussed that? Have you thought about that? I've definitely thought about it uh, more so now after having gone to the district conference and really the past few months engaging a lot with the other Rotary members. Uh, some of the, like the Goleta Club and the Santa Barbara Club, they've invited us out to their barbecues. Okay. And I think that has just been the most beneficial because you're just in a, a neutral environment, so to say, when you're eating food, you might, you might be having a drink, and you just get to be social. And um, I have a dog, and so that was one of the best ways I brought my dog <laughs> with me. And everybody that was a dog lover came over and said hi, and it was just an instant conversation starter. And I think Jenna's been so great because she has really helped us get in touch with the other Rotary clubs and really has been keeping us on, hey, we've got an event to go to. They're helping us. We're helping them. And so having her to kind of back us every step of the way has been fantastic, and she's really sparked my interest. To, to be a member of both. Good, good. Now, have you met any of the Rotarians that were Rotaractors before? Oh, you know, there's, there's I, a few of them. I don't think I've asked. Yeah, so maybe now this is going to be my, my question that I ask everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely do that. Um, Santa Barbara Sunrise has quite a few members. Uh, okay. Well, not quite a few. There's about three or four of them that have moved in from Rotaract into that. But that was the other chartering club. Okay. Now, your club chartered again three years ago, I believe, because that was part of the chartering of that. Okay. And it was a resurgence. It actually became a new club, but it, we lost the other club. They kind of went dormant. Okay. So uh, they were from the previous club. Gotcha. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but that is interesting. Um, the reason I ask that, uh, it's been um, a challenge, I would say, to make sure that we stay in contact with the Rotaractors because... Mm -hmm. We don't know what they want, and we don't know how we could support. Mm -hmm. I worked with Rotaract clubs, for example, where there was too much help. Gotcha. More than they, they really needed. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were getting smothered with it. Gotcha. I've seen other ones where you kind of just, they, they just let them go, and mm -hmm. eventually they, you know, they lose focus and lose direction, not knowing what Rotary is or stands for. Okay. So how do you create the balance? As uh, president, how have you seen it? You know, I think we've... Hmm. That's a good question. <laughs> Didn't mean to make it hard. No, 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 not at all. Um, again, again, Jenna is going to be my default here. Yeah, uh, yeah. She's been just really good at facilitating the conversation between us and between the two clubs. And I think we've just made it known that we really want to make this relationship work and last. Yeah. And so I don't think it's been too much help or not enough help. I think we've kind of come in and we've all equally agreed, hey, we want help and we need your help. And so now it's more of getting everybody to come to the events and show up and, okay. uh, yeah. So um, have you attended the uh, group eight meetings? That's the local, mm -hmm. local president's meetings. Yeah. Oh, you have? Mm -hmm. Has that helped out? 
Yeah, it's helped out a lot. Uh, I think the first couple meetings that we went to, and Jen and I have just been sitting in because they were running the Rotary Group 8 meetings as, the, as they mm -hmm. do, uh, but we've been able to sit in and listen to some of the concerns or things that goals that people have, and it's just cool to see um, the accountability and just we get to meet people every week. Sometimes the presidents come where they have to send a representative, and so that's been a really great way to one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. get some additional face time with everybody. And yeah, we really enjoyed them. Are you getting time um, at those meetings to actually share what you need, your needs, um, mm -hmm. if a project or event's coming up? Are yeah. they supporting you with that? Yeah, most certainly they are. Okay. So that's a great way to, to talk during the meetings and then also through emails, we've also been able to do that as well. Good, good. Um, the reason I was asking that also specifically about the group is that our, our assistant governor currently is uh, Scott, Scott mm -hmm. Phillips. Yes. And Scott Phillips is uh, our technical advisor for the show, so <laughs> he's going to be watching this. I want to make sure that he's doing his job. He is. Most <laughs> okay, he's good. Doing his job. Good to hear. <laughs> he got us in touch, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, this is true. <laughs> Very did. true. Good job. Um, what is your, something unique in the future that you kind of would like to do as a Rotaractor or, or a Rotaract president through a club? Have uh, you thought about that? Something really unique. Uh, you know, I think after seeing that we had some visiting guests from Mexico and Korea here, I would absolutely love to travel on behalf of Rotary or Rotaract and go and see some of the meetings that are taking place in other countries. I've heard so much about just uh, the hospitality that's shown or just the ways that they run their meetings or their big events. And I think it would be really great to create some sort of international uh, partnership with another Rotaract club okay. and um, have people come back and forth and help. Sounds good. Now each year um, I do two uh, safaris, I call them project safaris to Mexico. Okay. Um, you're welcome to join us on those. Believe it or not, we are actually hosted by the district from Mexico. Okay. And so you have homestays. Um, the cost is just the airfare, which I would say a sponsoring club should support for you. Mm -hmm. uh, we went last time with our members, and aside from the $350, $400 airfare, they came out with uh, nothing out of pocket. Wow. So, so, so if you get that part covered, I think they'll take care of you. Yeah, on that's that definitely something. And it's great, too, because you're bilingual, so mm -hmm. that would help. <laughs> yeah, that'd that be would, fantastic. That would help a lot. So it's going to be an open invitation. We go uh, every spring and fall. Okay, great. Okay. And Thank you. Again, it's to organize projects, different projects. So tell us, uh, we, we got a little bit of time here. One more thing about uh, Rotaract. Tell us where you meet and when. We meet at uh, Telegraph Brewery in towns on Salsi Puedes, and we meet twice a month, and some the first and third Tuesday, if I remember correctly, <laughs> Jenna's gonna kill me if I say it wrong. <laughs> uh, we usually meet at 6.15, and sometimes we'll meet at the mission if we want to, or we can decide to meet elsewhere. But for now, it's been fun to meet at a local brewery Perfect. and get together and have a beer and have a chat. Sounds good. Well, I'll have to make one of those for sure. You will. Uh, and thanks for coming. We sure appreciate it. Thank you. And with that, everybody, thank you very much. Take a look at the Rotaract and what they have to offer and what you could offer them because uh, that's the future of Rotary. That's going to be the future of what's going to change our world. With that, thank you very much, and we will see you next time. <laughs>